<laughs> Why hear both, one voice when you can hear both of them at the same time? I think we've got the um, start <laughs> quote for the podcast. <laughs> Hello there, folks. I'm Dan Brown, and with me today is... Jono Griffiths. And welcome to The Sort of Interesting Show. So then, Jono, let's start this in the usual fashion. What have we been up to recently? Power kiting. Well, I love the sound of that already. The word power preceding anything makes it awesome. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, for anybody who's not familiar, power kiting is basically just... Heading out into a field or to a beach or just a nice clear open space free of obstacles with a rather large kite that could lead to any potential disaster or a great time. It's very much up in the air which one it lands in though, so to speak. No pun intended there. <laughs> I've only been power kiting with you a couple of times because you've only just got me into it, but when did you first start? Well, I'm glad that you've asked me that, because it's created an exceptionally structured podcast introduction, obviously purely <laughs> coincidental. Um, well, at the start of the year, me and a friend were just thinking, what should we do? I know, let's get a kite, so we can be kids again and live like the good old days. So I had a quick look around on the internet and ended up picking up a 20 quid kite, but being me, I couldn't resist getting a small power kite. And as it turns out, the small power kite in this case, the power word, I would say is the entirely wrong word to use, as it is nothing more than just a slight pull on the strings if there's a big gust of wind. So um, from there, in the usual way that these things happen, I was obsessed with looking on YouTube. And as John here can vouch for, I've, I've got a terrible habit of seeing something and thinking, yes, this is brilliant, I want in. And seeing these people dragged around and jumping on these massive kites, I thought, right, I've got to sell my stuff to buy one of these, and promptly did so. So I ended up with a nice 4 metre Cirrus Pro power kite. It was one of the cheapest big kites that I could find, but still cost 160 quid, so hardly cheap at all. Uh, but certainly compared to the others, is not that expensive. And, well, from there, the great Dan Brown power kite and adventure has continued. Well, I've spoken an awful lot. I think it's time to hand over to you, as you've had the most recent introduction to power kiting. How do you think it measured up to what you were expecting it? I know you were certainly quite quite tired out, as we all are, after a good session yeah. on the kite. Yeah. Well, I never actually uh, had a go on that first kite you, you bought. This, the new one, is about four times bigger than... Oh, definitely, yeah. Yeah. I couldn't get over the size of it. It's huge. It's basically a parachute. Oh, God, yeah. It is. It's just... And when we were using it's physically exhausting oh. to fly. I'm approximately, I don't know, twice your body mass. Well, I would say, yeah, as a rough estimate. <laughs> and it wasn't pulling me around as much as you, but yeah, it's certainly hard work just to stand on the spot. If it gets windy, then you can't stand on the spot. You're literally running around the field after it or dragging you along if it's wet grass, which can be quite fun. It didn't physically lift me off my feet, but it does you, doesn't it? Oh, with hardly a breeze in the air, I'm off and away to the nearest town. There's all sorts of things you could do with this. Well, we've had all sorts of ideas, taking a skateboard and taking the wheels off and trying to, like, almost grass board. <laughs> we've had all sorts of random ideas, haven't we? The only trouble is, at the moment, I'm too scared to try any of them. As it, well, we physically haven't got enough open space, have we? Yeah, that's that's one of the big things with power kiting. No, I am too scared to try any of these ideas like mountain boarding and getting a buggy and all that sort of thing. Because, well, as you say, the space required for it. I mean, when just on our feet, it can take about I'd say ten seconds to do a hundred meters being dragged along with it. It's quite a terrifying experience. As much as it is an incredibly demanding experience, it is absolutely awesome. I've got to say, over these last seven months, I've absolutely loved trying to perfect the art of jumping. And sometimes they go well, and sometimes they, they don't quite end up on my feet. But Your face. Yes. It's, um, it's just, it's all part of the risks that we take, <laughs> being these extreme sportsmen that we obviously are. <laughs> and we must warn you that this is quite... Are dangerous. It shouldn't be taken lightly. Oh, definitely not. You really need to think about the space that you will need. 
Where and we usually do it on a... It's a football-sized field. Oh, yes. And that is almost not enough space. Oh, definitely. No. I mean, in an ideal world, you would just turn up at an airfield. Don't. Obviously, do not do that. I must <laughs> point that out. Um, but you would need just a huge area, like the people you see on the beaches yeah. with their mountain boards going along. It is just a fascinating thing of like how powerful these kites are. And um, just to put it into perspective... Um, Went out with the big kite the other week and it was quite windy and I'd never taken it out in such conditions. So I thought, as much as this seems like it's going to be ending in disaster, because I haven't used the kite in these conditions, I better just try it now so I know for the future whether to do it or not. I picked the kite up, it went straight into the air and even at what's theoretically one of its weakest points directly overhead, it picked me straight up off the ground. I managed to get back onto my feet and started to panic as I knew I had to fetch it into the strong wind to land it. So tried pulling it down. As soon as it went into the strong wind, it just pulled me straight off my feet, dragged me probably 20, 30 metres along, just proper hands out in front of me, dragged straight along my front. Went across a horrible astroturf cricket pitch, at which point my knuckles were dragged along the surface. And, well, I mean, this is... I think it must be getting on for a month since it happened... And even now, there's still the last remnants of how much flesh was taken off me one knuckle. Just just healing and repairing itself now. It just doesn't bear thinking about it. If I hadn't have been able to stop when I did, what could have happened? So yes, take this exceptionally seriously. As much as it's great fun. Yeah, just a general use of common sense. Yeah. Avoid, try and avoid overhead power lines at all costs as well. Oh, definitely. That will end in disaster. Oh, good grief. Well, I think you only have to type in something like Power Kite Fail to YouTube and then see the endless amounts of videos, including some of ours, that um, will turn up there to see just how dangerous it can be. Speaking of YouTube, it is well worth just having a general search for Power Kites because, I mean, some of the things that people have been up to are just absolutely incredible. I mean, there was that one video that you sent me on Facebook. Yeah, a canoe being pulled by a 50-metre foil along the sea. It was almost a speed of 70 mile an hour. Yeah, I think something like that. Just absolutely beyond belief. And to think that a 50 metre kite, I mean, that is... Well, I don't know how many of these houses we're in now you could fit in that sort of... 50 metres is the length of an Olympic-sized swimming pool. So if uh, you think about it, that's how big the foil on this kite was. Oh, goodness me. It's, well, I certainly wouldn't want to be taking that out to our field. <laughs> Obviously, a 50-metre kite is taking it to the extreme, and it doesn't bear thinking about the cost involved in such a project. But, um, yeah, we've been loving it with the 4-metre kite. So, any final thoughts, Jono? Yeah, the first session that I had to go, it was good fun. It was really hard work, though, a lot more than oh, I was yes. expecting. You know, I was physically aching the day after. Oh, yes. Well, I, d I did almost regret buying it when I first got it all those months ago. <laughs> yeah, so that's power kiting. Uh, have a look on the internet obviously check out sortofinteresting.com and you can see our general article and a couple of videos of us running around the field like idiots there um, so I suppose all that's left to say is obviously visit the site as mentioned Jono I believe you're on Twitter yep yeah, I'm at Jono Griffiths underscore what <laughs> no, no, no that's not me <laughs> don't don't spam him <laughs> right <laughs> If you want to follow me on Twitter, I'm at Jono underscore Griffiths1. And you can also follow me. I'm at sort underscore of underscore Dan. So that's sort of Dan. Um, I suppose, really, it's goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from me. See you the next time. <laughs> this is the second take for giving a high five. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Do you want to start from scratch? <laughs>